Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. And as we prepare it, oh God, Father, for your people, may you use me to deliver your word, Lord Jesus. May you use me to make your name known today to the end of the earth. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So, have you found out their names? Where they come from? What they had for lunch? So today I'm going to talk about Abundant Grace Jacob. Tell your neighbor, Abundant Grace Jacob. Abundant Grace Jacob. And um, as I start, there's a small story, a short story that I'd like to share with you. I think we'll shed some light to, to what I'm about to say, yeah? And I usually use pictures or photographs. So I asked Jeff to, sh uh, to put this. Are you able to see this? It's a roundabout. Uh, the, pic the photograph is... Uh, a bit blurry, but are we able to see it? Yeah. yeah. So a few years ago, a friend of mine, this is, uh, this is Kigali, Rwanda. A friend of mine uh, told me that they usually have a marathon every year. Yeah? Every year. So during that, that marathon, they would run, they would come from this side, they come running, they go around the roundabout, and they go back. Yeah? So when she came running and she reached the roundabout, are you seeing this? Um, this is called, um, some people call it a divider. Yeah. When she reached here, she didn't go around the roundabout. She went before the roundabout, she just cornered and went back. Are you seeing those border border guys? When they reach here, they just, they don't reach the roundabout. Also some... Uh, VIP vehicles when they reach here. So when she reached here, she turned and went back. As she had reached somewhere there, God told her, but do you know that is how the journey of your life has been? That her entire life, she has not been going around the roundabout. She has been reaching here and she takes a shortcut. Do you know those people who have lived such a life. So when the Lord told her, you, that, that has, that, that's the story of your life. That's how you've been your entire life. She went around the roundabout seven times. And people asking her, what is wrong? Why aren't you living around about? She's like, only I and God know what is going on. Yeah? So, do you know some people who are like that? Oh, Maybe you, a couple of times. You've gone around that roundabout. And uh, what has happened? It has, uh, it has cost you in the long run. So that brings me to the story of Jacob. Have you all understood that story? Yes. Have you all understood it? Yeah. Okay. So, Jacob. Who is Jacob? I'm sure we have all grown up hearing the name Jacob. Some of us named our children Jacob. In your own understanding, who is Jacob to you? How do you perceive Jacob? Yeah? In like five seconds, who is Jacob to you? Or how do you understand the story of Jacob? Yeah? Some of us believe he took shortcuts just like that. But then when you read the story of Jacob, you realize that even when we think he took a shortcut, he took the longest route. Yeah? And in that longest route, if it had not been the abundant grace of God, he wouldn't have made it. Do you all believe it? He wouldn't have made it. I'm sure that some of us have taken shortcuts. And if it wasn't for God, that someone brought a car or someone came driving behind you a border border you wouldn't have made it through that shortcut yeah 
So, how was the abundant grace sufficient for Jacob? Jacob had an encounter with God. If Jacob didn't have an encounter with God, maybe we wouldn't be reading about him. Yep. He had an encounter. He had an encounter with God. And we can go to Genesis 28, verse 10. Genesis 28, verse 10. If you'd like to write it down. Now Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached the heaven. And there were, and there were the angels of God, and there were and there the angels of God was ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Can you give me verse 14? Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Give me 15. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. That is the word of God. That in his distress, in his discouragement. I don't know if you've met people who have left their homeland. I'm sure 80, 90% of us have, were not born in Kampala. Some of us came following the electricity poles to Kampala. Some of us, we just had a contact. Others had a place of, um, the name of a place that when you reach Chireka, ask around. There is a diary, at the diary you will ask, you get. But imagine in that, on your journey, or before you start your journey, you encounter God, or you meet someone. I'm trying to explain to you this encounter with God. You meet someone on the bus going to Chireka. How blessed would you feel? Even if that person taking us back long ago, these days, buses stop at petrol, at petrol stations. Those days, we would um, go to the bush. A bus would stop at the bush horizon, and then we all go to the bush. I'm sure you'd get out to go to the bush with that person because he knows Chirek, and you don't know Chirek. That's how clingy you'd be with that person. So imagine Jacob having an encounter with God, how that blessed him. And God telling him, I'll bless you. I'll not leave you. I'll not forsake you. Yeah? Imagine you living in your hometown. You don't know if you'll ever go back. Just like Jacob, he didn't know that he would ever go back. And then he meets God. And God talks to him, I'll bless you. I'll be with you. I'll bless your descendants. How would you feel as a person? Yeah? So, I pray that on this journey that you're on, as a believer, may you have an encounter with God. Some of us are believing to go abroad. On that flight, may you meet someone. May the Lord use that person that you'll meet to be a blessing to you. Or may you have an encounter with God, just like Jacob. He had no idea where he was going. All he knew was... I am going to my uncle Laban. Yeah? That's all he knew. And he encounters God. Does it, does, it, does it make sense to you? He encountered God and his life changed. He encountered God and he had an assurance of where he was going. 
that all was going to be well. Yeah? He had shame. He had regret. But when he encountered God with that shame, with that regret, with doubt, everything ceased. Yeah? So I pray that today as we talk about Jacob, may the Lord encounter you where you are at that point where you don't know if you should stay where you are. You don't know if you should continue on that journey. I have people who have met and they have said if, if I didn't dream, if I didn't have an encounter with God, I wouldn't still be in this marriage. To Jacob it was a journey, to you it could be a situation and I pray, how I pray that you meet God in that doubt that you are in, in that pain that you might be having. I pray that you meet God. Because of abundant grace, Jacob had favor. Jacob had favor. How did Jacob have favor? You can uh, help me go to Genesis 29, 13. Genesis 29, 13. Then it came to pass when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his, uh, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. He stayed with him for a month. That is favor. Isn't it favor? Um, I know someone, another small story. I know someone, you know these things of um, getting married when you have children? So this person got married to, he married a lady, but he had children. And you know in Uganda, our grandparents love children so much. That if you have children as far as Tanzania, your grandparent, your grandmother will go there to bring their children to the lineage. So this girl who had been given birth to, she's going to secondary. And the grandmother gets hold of her hand, gets her from the village to Kampala where the uncle, where the father married. And uh, this woman who they married, when she saw the, daughter, the, the child, who is a stepdaughter, she said, it is a Luganda word. Mm -hmm. Don't want to use it. <laughs> but it was not a good word. Muzunga mulaga wa. That was the word. Rachi muzungira wa no. Is that favor? And I'm sure some of us have encountered such situations where you thought you have an uncle, an auntie, a father in Kampala, and when you reach, it's a different story. You put in the garage, you are told, Odayodi, or they ask the head of the house, Ono Muganda Wadayodi. I'm sure you've had such stories. But because Jacob had encountered God, he found favor in the eyes of Laban. That is a blessing to find favor in the eyes of your uncle, to find favor in the eyes of your aunt or your guardian. The people who have failed to find favor where they have moved, where they, have, where they thought there was going to be refuge. Yeah? I'm sure some of us, you've been rejected by church members. You thought you're going to come to church. It's all going to be good, but then you rejected. But because of the grace that was on Jacob, he wasn't rejected by his uncle. He was welcomed. So I pray that if you have rejection in your heart, you've been rejected over the years, I pray that this story of Jacob blesses you. And because God had his favor on Jacob, there was favor on Laban. Are we together? That should be in Genesis 30, verse 27. 
And Laban said to him, Please stay, I have found favor in your eyes. Please stay if I have found favor in your eyes. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. I have learned that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Have you been somewhere and because of your presence there, because of your prayers, that place is blessed? Because of your prayers, your workplace is blessed? Because of your prayers, your marriage is blessed? Because of the prayers of your son, you haven't been coming to church, but your son, your daughter has been coming to church, your household is flourishing. Because of the relationship uh, Jacob had with God, what happened? Laban flourished. Laban told him, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. Have you ever visited someone and they tell you, please stay? Please stay. Most of us, it has happened like that because maybe you are the one who has some kamani and you visited. Ever since you came to Yakumugati, it has happened in villages. Christmas, because they are eating bread, they are eating beef, they are eating chicken. Come 2nd January, eh. But imagine 2nd, 2nd January, they're like, please stay. If you have found favor in your eyes, please stay. Yeah? May it be said about you that when you visit, they say, please stay. In Jesus' name. There are people who visit your shop, and I've, I've heard about this, and I've seen it. They visit your business, and that day you make abnormal profits. Just the two hours they have spent at your shop. May it be said unto you that when you visit post businesses, in those two hours, they flourish. You get. Um, you visit homes, and in those two hours, the children behave <laughs> because you are there. In Jesus' name. Yeah? Jacob had favor. And because of that favor, it, over, it overflowed in the house of Laban. In the house of Laban. If you, this one is a trick one. If you go to Genesis 31.16. For all, for all these riches which God has taken from our father and um, from our father are really, our, our, let me just repeat again. For all these riches which God has taken from our father are really ours and our, and our children's. Now then, whatever God, has said, uh, whatever God has said, do it. These are the two waves of Jacob. Two waves of Jacob. That Jacob found favor before his waves. May it be said unto you that you have found favor before your wife. When I was reading it, I was going to skip this point. But then I remembered. There are many of us who have no favor before our spouses. There is no favor. When you enter the house, the children run away. When you enter the house, the husband runs away. The wife runs away. The dogs stop barking. And it is true. It is true, by the way. The neighbors, there are some people whereby when they will be driving on the village, people enter their houses. Just the village, but imagine at home. To ask you, but how would you stay with that man? May you find favor before your spouse. May you find favor before your children. Children are looking forward to your coming back. Your spouse is looking forward to your coming back. And this is the abundant grace that was on Jacob. Imagine if one wife is not submitting, but two, the two wives he had, they submitted to him. And that's the favor we are talking about. 
And because of that, the Lord, because of the favor that was on Jacob, God increased Jacob. He increased him. Everything he was doing was actually multiplying. You can imagine, the Bible talks about in the years he was with Laban. Laban changed his wages ten times. Ten times. Imagine your wages being changed ten times, but you still prosper. Then your wages are not being changed for better. Your wages are being changed for worse. But still, God increases you. Ngaba gamba, use Luganda. Imagine you are earning four million, but by the end of fourteen years, you are earning. 200,000. But you are the one who drives the latest car. You are the one whose children are in the best schools. You are the one who is constructing apartments. And so that is why Laban was confused. I have changed your wages 10 times. But it's like I'm increasing your wages. That's the abundant grace of God. That you are not living on your wages but you're living on the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Abundant grace brings about reconciliation. Yeah? Abundant grace brings about reconciliation. I don't know if you all understand reconciliation. What is reconciliation in Uganda? Okuzomukago Oktabagana. Yeah. Abundant grace brings about Oktabagana. Yeah. To bring it to bring this point home. I know someone, I know of someone who think of them as family friends. Growing up, the two brothers, one took the other to the prison because of land wrangles. Yeah? Because of land wrangles. And when the brother got out, got out of prison, he left the village and went to the city. As the Lord lives, till date, the other brother who took the other to the prison gave birth, he has, grand, he has great grandchildren, but the children don't know the names of the uncle, the names of the tatomoto, they don't even know their children. They separated because of land. And the people have met their two brothers, they're in the same place, they don't talk to each other, their children don't talk to each other. I don't know if I can bear witness. Like this beef, all this um, anger has come from the, from the parents to the children, to the grandchildren, to the great grandchildren. You've lived in villages where the grandfather built here, the sons built nearby. But you don't eat food at your uncles, you don't eat food at your aunties. Because when they were growing up, someone wore the other one's dress. And that dress was for Christmas until date. They don't what? They don't talk. He said from a dress. These are true stories. So if you can go to um, Genesis 31:43. This is Laban reconciling with, with Jacob. Says, and Laban answered and said to Jacob, these daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine, but what can I do this day to these my daughters or to their children whom they have born? 
Now therefore come let us make a covenant you and I and let it be a witness between you and me. There Laban and Jacob reconciled. They made a covenant. If you can go to 33 verse 3. Genesis 33 verse 3. says, then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and wept. This is Jacob reconciling with Esau. That Esau, Bible says, Esau came running. May it be said unto you, that the people you've had problems with come running to embrace you in Jesus' name. They hadn't seen each other in over 14 plus years. And when he ran away from his home, what happened? He went running. Day and night, he walked to Laban's home. But when he met Esau, Esau embraced him. Esau came running. May it be said unto you that the people you've been having issues with, may they come running after 10 years, after 14 years. I pray you understand the magnitude of, of that statement. Someone you've not seen in years, them being genuinely happy. In Africa, we have a syndrome. Tu seka nenga de tu seka. Like we go for Christmas, we go for burials, we go for, we go for parties. But we know me and that person, then have you, have you met some of, those, some of those people? I believe they're not here. When there is need, ah, we are friends. After an age, that's what they say going back in the car. But the man it again the kuja. You understand? Those are the stories we hear in the car going back. Eh. And you're like, but you guys were happy. You were happy. We saw you happy. You cut the cake together. Hmm? You cut the cake together, but when you part ways, ha. Huh? trouble. But this is, not, this is not what was in Esau's heart. Esau actually ran and he cried. And he cried. Some we've had people who have gone for burials not to not to bury but to make sure there is concrete. Like I did not have a bat, I did not have a timba, I did not concrete. And some people that is their horizon. Others go just to make sure that something goes wrong. That's the reason why they have gone, they have attended your party because there is no reconciliation. They come just to make sure that it rains. They invite that aunt you didn't invite to cause if these two people meet, there has to be Plates have to be turned upside down. And that's why they have come. But the Bible tells us that when Esau saw Jacob, he ran. Tonight, I pray that as you go back home, may, may you be the person running to that other person you, you've spent years without talking to. You have been bypassing their children. May you be the person to to reconcile, to run towards your brother, towards your sister. Yep. Brings me to the last point. The last shall be the first. Do you all know what the name Jacob means? The 
Do you know the definition of the name Jacob? Jacob means to follow behind. That's the name, Jacob. Jacob means to follow behind. Imagine growing up there are people I've met that their families had written off. Have you ever seen those people? Have you ever met those people? Their families wrote them off because they were alcoholics, because they ran away from school, because maybe they got pregnant before marriage, and they were written off. Yeah? Jacob, being called Jacob, the name means, it means what? To follow behind. I don't know what your name means. I pray it is not to follow behind. To walk, like when people are going for a major thing, eh? if there is a fundraising, there will be a lot of food. You also come. You know, you know those people they call? There will be a lot of food. You also come. Like they're not calling you to, to Kutesa, to, 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 yes, to, to bless and grace the occasion. Uh, there will be a lot of food. Bambi, you come. There might be a, a water shortage. Abanachi Mamazi. That's the reason why they have called you. You are following behind. Yep. Yeah. And that was Jacob. That was Jacob in the beginning. I pray that as you live tonight, may the Lord change your name from Jacob to Israel. May the Lord change your name. May the Lord change your name. I've, I've met some friends from the north. Sometimes people in the north are called names because of the situations them, their families are in. Because of the situation your mom might be facing, your family might be facing, and they call your name. And that name follows you. Yep. I, um, a friend of mine was was doing a deliverance on someone and they realized that this gentleman who had lost his brother at the age of three, two, around two years, growing up, he missed his brother. His brother died at the age of two. So when he married and gave birth to a, to a son, he called the son that name. So when they were doing deliverance, that's, that's the father where did you get this name? And the father told, told them, that was my brother's name. He passed away. And that story does not end well. At the same age, that son also passed away. At that age. We told him to change the name of the child. He, he was hesitant. And a few days later, that child passed away in Mulago. So, be careful what you call your children. By the story of Jacob, God changed his name to Israel. And because he changed his name to Israel, if you go to Genesis 47.10, Genesis 47.10 says that, So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went, before, went, from, went from before him. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before him. Someone who is born far away in Canaan. He's blessing the, the richest king on earth. The most civilized city on earth. As I was reading the story of Jacob, this really captured my eye. When you're born and you, you're called following from behind. That when, when the people, the so-called people, the elites sit down. You will come and follow from behind. This is Jacob laying his hands on Pharaoh. After being said that he shall follow from behind, 
after running and doesn't know where he's going, spending days and nights without food, running from his brother. See what happens in Genesis 47.10. He's blessing kings. May it be said unto you, in Jesus' name, that you who ran from Kaberamaido, from Chanamukaka, you are posing on Uganda Airlines, on those stairs. Have you seen those people? When they enter Uganda Airlines, they are posing. It is, the, it is by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. But beyond posing, when they reach UK, they are laying their hands on King Charles. I don't know if it makes sense to you. But you remember where I have come from. In that house of, it's not Kadongo, but use cow dung. And you are in UK. You are before the king. And the king is asking you to pray for him. I pray it is said unto you. The people who have gone before us, the people who have gone before us, if you watch some videos of Pastor Kayanja, you'll see the places God has taken him. And you wonder. You'll see Benny Hinn, the places God has taken him. When they are discussing about nations, Billy Graham, before he passed away, he said he sat, he sat in, in offices where the American presidents were. He gave counsel to six American presidents, over six American presidents. That's Billy Graham. Over six. This is, we're going back to that. Yep. So I pray tonight that as as you in the presence of God, may you get that urge to talk to God and ask God, Father Lord, you know where I have come from? Have you seen that meme on that makes rounds on WhatsApp that if some of you know where we come from, you wouldn't be fighting us? Have you seen that meme that if some of you know where we have come from, if some, if some of you knew where Jacob came from, you wouldn't have an issue with him. But because of the abundant grace of God, he made him sit with kings. Amen? Because of the abundant grace of God, God blessed Jacob and Esau. If you go to Genesis 36 verse 7, if you can go to six. Can start, with, start from six. Genesis. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the, the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and, and all his goods which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his of his brother Jacob for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together and the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock may it be said unto you these two gentlemen had not got their inheritance from their father their father was still alive but what God had blessed them with was too much that one lived in Mengo, another one, which other hill is there? Is Rubaga Hill? Yes. Mengo, another one in, in Rubaga, they couldn't live together because of how God had blessed them. Because of how God had blessed them. I pray that tonight, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. May the Lord... May the Lord bless you. Jacob, lastly, 
Jacob had because of reconciliation, because of the abundant grace of God, Jacob reconciled with his father. Jacob buried his father. Amen? You can go to Genesis thirty-five twenty-seven. Then Jacob came to his father, Isaac, at Mamre. And um, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. Esau and Jacob buried him. Some of us might be here or online, and when you left that house, they said, Sagara Kulaba, Tonzi Kanga, Nekuvijabi Angetokolachi, Tojanga. For the years you've been in Kampala, for the years you are wherever you are, you know that when my parents die, I'm not going back. When my brother dies, I'm not going back. I pray tonight that may the Lord reconcile you with those people. That when you make that phone call, may they come running. In Jesus' name. Amen.